this lecture we will discuss about a comparative analysis of international design projects so we will see like how uh, architectural projects from across the world are uh, dealing with this uh, actually uh, overall climates you know and uh, how they are actually going for the like a sustainable designs so one of the actually uh, beautiful examples i have taken is from like uh, this uh, uh, netherland okay so this is the greenest building actually called in the like a uh, netherland so it doesn't uses any external fuel in any, any external electricity you know water or even like a sewage it actually uh, caters to uh, all it, it, its needs from the site itself and it actually recycles everything on the site itself so this is uh, one of the actually most amazing actually projects from across the world you know so that is why i have chosen the, this to give you the first example of this building so you see this uh, it has actually followed a unique uh, design you know for like a, these uh, uh, solar photovoltaic uh, like a uh, panels you know so on this uh, actually this uh, parabolic actually uh, the shape in the daytime it, it they use for like a uh, collecting the uh, actually for this uh, power generation and in the night time they use uh, this actually trough for like a uh, you know harvesting uh, uh, water you know from the like a uh, dew and the atmospheric actually this uh, precipitation you know so and this is actually typical uh, cross section so you can see the parking uh, level in the like a basement you know service areas greenhouse like a visiting uh, areas over here technically uh, like a, this technical cross section of a florid like a 2012 and uh, this uh, further here like a, a four storage of like multi purple spaces and offices further in the lower level you can see this building utilizes this the thermal uh, actually uh, you know this uh, uh, energy of this uh, the, the ground beneath this actually project you know and uh, uh, like uh, it, it uses this uh, fine wire heat exchangers you know uh, use of like very low temperature actually this thing so you see like how this uh, water is being sent actually in the lower floors you know for like a uh, uh, heat exchange and all that and the secondly like uh, it uses like lightweight concrete large span double uh, actually flooring system you see one uh, unit is suspended here in the air you know so to cover actually the f floors you know wider floors with the minimal amount of actually en energy you know and self sufficiency in general utility so this building practically has a uh, achieved a self sufficiency it doesn't it doesn't require actually any type of like a fuel or energy or anything a resource from the outside you know so one of the actually most beautiful and amazing actually uh, examples you must actually uh, look for this project for like a detailed you know understanding of this project you know once you are done with this lecture so uh, one by one i'll show you some uh, examples from across the world this is actually a rainwater harvesting tank from kerala so well uh, these kind of like efforts are being used you know everywhere kerala is kerala is known for like is a water surplus actually uh, state you know there is a, a huge amount of water you know available in there, like a groundwater you know as well as it receives like a huge amount of like a, this a rainfall also every year you know but still they have actually this uh, kind of like a systems in the place which is worth praising the next example of uh, this uh, California Academy of uh, Sciences from San, Fra San Francisco, California. So this is a sustainable uh, building designed by a famous architect Renzo Piano. You know, so you can see like uh, how they have used uh, this uh, uh, an extensive actually this landscaping on this campus and this urban heat island effect to counter they have used actually this uh, uh, green actually surface on the top of this building. The next building is uh, from like a Seattle, you know, this was opened in 2013 on the Earth Day. This office located in Seattle, Washington is infamous for being a zero energy building. The entirety of uh, its energy consumption is fully covered by the 575 solar panels on the top. You can see that harvest more than it's, it is uses in a year. So yes, the claim is definitely bona fide. This Miller Hull designed six story building has even got a living building certificate. So one of the very unique uh, features like we have been discussing buildings are like a uh, living organisms but uh, here they have started already giving this certification system also like uh, and this building has received uh, it's like a living building uh, certificate the next is the edge from Amsterdam the edge is an app control uh, green building you know situated in Amsterdam designed by PLP architecture firm this office refrains to actually traditional electric lights and embraces LED uh, technology powered by what they call digital ceiling it's basically a sensor system connected by computer cables pre-empting lighting needs instead of running at a fixed rate and it is estimated to save 80 percent of the energy compared to traditional lighting window blinds are flexible to adjust with the app 
Outside, the building exterior is clad with solar panels to generate electricity. Temperatures inside are controlled by pumping cooler and warmer water from different altitudes in an aquifer. No wonder this building got 98.3% in British rating system, Building Research and Establishment Environment Assessment Methodology, commonly we know it as BREEAM, you know, the, the highest score you know, received by any building till date. So this is one of the actually uh, beautiful examples of like how uh, the buildings can be integrated with the technology you know, and can be actually optimized for like energy as well as like resource consumption. Next we have uh, this uh, Copenhill, this is from Copenhagen. So Copenhill is an eco-friendly power plant that incinerates waste to generate electricity. Opened just a few years back in 2006-17, the multipurpose project was commissioned to uh, Jark Ingels Group BIG, where genius young architect Jark Ingel is the founding uh, partner and creative director. The 16,000 square meter structure is designed to convert 4 lakh tons of waste per year into uh, scads of clean energy, enough to power uh, over 1 lakh homes within the region, emitting zero toxin in the process to the atmosphere's advantage. And outstanding, as outstanding it is a, as a waste to energy plant, Cop Copenhill is also a superb sports facility. Capped by over 500 meter sky uh, uh, ski slope uh, design, visitors could, could use it for like hiking trails, snowboarding, you know, playground, uh, trail running, etc. Uh, wall climbing and skiing etc. The last one uh, is what locals are most thankful for because even though Denmark receives hopes, uh, heaps of snow in the winter, it is uh, generally geographically uh, flat preventing it from being ideal terrain for ski and snowboard enthusiasts. So you see like how this uh, building is converted into a recreational uh, uh, arena also in the like a uh, uh, winter months as a, like a ski arena. You know, so and uh, with no actually toxin, uh, toxic like uh, effluents or uh, exhaust, you know, this building consumes waste to generate energy. So one of the actually amazing uh, examples of like a sustainability uh, in the like a recent times. The next example is uh, Taipei 101. You may have uh, seen this building in pictures or you may have been to this place in Taiwan. This is from Taipei, Taipei 101, you know, is a super tall uh, skyscraper designed by C.Y. Lee standing probably over 509 meters high. The architecture is deemed as the world's tallest green building by Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design LEED certification system. Uh, back in the like, summer of 2011, it's a double pane window block, external heat uh, uh, by 50%. It uses low flow water system that effectively uh, lessens its water consumption by 30%, saving roughly 7.4 million gallons of water each year. It is also expected to save over 14 million kilowatt hours of electricity, equivalent to approximately $1.2 million each year. Further, we have uh, this example of One Angel Square from Manchester. Uh, Award-winning architecture uh, practice 3D Read had a uh, flexibility in mind when they designed One Angel Square. The structure of the office building located in Manchester is convenient and open to reorganization so tenants could, uh, could easily rearrange the space as they see fit. This ultimately saves the energy and cost needed to re refit the whole system. The building's facade is designed to be double skinned, reducing cooling and heating costs. Underground concrete tubes were installed to bring in cool air via a heat exchanger. Inside the stylish furniture are made to recycle uh, of like a waste pla pallets. Uh, for the whole system, it got a BREEAM score of 95.16%. Okay, this uh, you must be uh, aware of. This is like an Apple Park from California. It's a recently actually a completed building. One must say Apple's latest headquarter is the ultimate architectural achievement of how the campus of a visionary company should be designed. Designed by Foster Plus Partners firm, the 7,8200 square meter uh, complex was Steve Jobs' vision that he got when he walked through the London's Hyde Park. The campus includes a central ring-shaped building that runs completely on sustainable energy harvested by the solar panels that cap the super ship, the spaceship-like megastructure. The canopies are installed between each floor to protect staff from the intense uh, California sun. Each canopy is further equipped with a ventilation system that dispenses air in and out of the building. All in all, this is a sustainable architecture that actually breathes. So here you can see from the site itself, the rest of the actually area, you know, uh, apart from this uh, uh, this building, you know, looks like a place of like a landscape, you know, a densely landscape area, a green space even inside uh, uh, this circle, if you see, it's a highly vegetated area, you know, and uh, this building is capped by these solar photovoltaic uh, panels for like harvesting energy. So this building is also one of the best examples of uh, sustainable projects in the recent times.
The next one, Eden Project Cornwall uh, from Cornwall. Uh, a mega project envisioned to make a better life for all. Eden Project is a public attraction situated in Cornwall, UK. Nestled in a huge Sega crater, this uh, Nicholas Grimshaw design complex consists of two massive enclosures that house thousands of plant uh, species in adjoining domes, simulating a rainforest and Mediterranean environment uh, uh, respectively. All water used to create the humid conditions of the rainforest biome and to provide the toilet facilities are sanitized rainwater, while main water from the public infrastructure is used for like a hand washing and cooking. For electricity, when uh, project uses renewable uh, energy from adjacent wind turbines. At the end of 2010, the Eden project was granted permission to build a geothermal electricity plant. It is estimated to generate 4 megawatts of uh, sufficient to supply Eden and approximately 5,000 like households also. So you see the, the, the unique actually uh, you know structure and the unique adoption like in this uh, uh, actually uh, uh, place like how they have built this structure. Further we have uh, this Shanghai Tower from Shanghai. Most people recognized Burj Khalifa as the tallest building in the world at the moment. But uh, little did they know that the building at the second place is nothing to be overlooked. Well, uh, a new building has also come up uh, uh, in those like uh, actually countries you may be aware of uh, who have actually overtaken all to be the tallest building. Well, uh, this building standing at 632 meter high Shanghai Tower is both an architectural wonder as well as a sustainable one also. Opened in year 2015, the Gensler Design Office hotel and retail complex is clad with transparent second skin, creating a buffer of captured air for natural ventilation, automatically reducing energy cost. Its exterior lights are powered by 270 wind turbines that incorporated into a facade. Thanks to these measures, the power uh, the tower receives uh, a platinum lead certification for using significantly less power than most skyscraper, uh, skyscrapers would. Further, uh, I would like to explain uh, uh, one project in detail. This is uh, the project, the green, uh, the Edith Green, you know, from uh, Wendelweert Federal Building, Portland, Oregon. The Edith Green uh, Wendelweert EGWW Federal Building is an 18-story, uh, 512,474 square foot office tower in downtown Portland, Oregon. The originally built in 1974, the building received funding from American Recovery and Reinvestment Act to undergo a major renovation to replace. Uh, uh, outdated equipment and systems. This funding actually stipulated the project must uh, meet the stringent energy and water conservation requirements of the Energy Independence and Security Act EISA. As significant as the 55% energy use reduction and 65% water use reduction are, the most remarkable result of the renovation was the increased occupant satisfaction achieved. One year after moving into EGWW, tenants indicated increased satisfaction compared to their temporary quarters in a survey uh, for the center of the built environment. So we will see some images and uh, 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 like a details, more details of this project. So this is the actually building. So it was an actually existing building and a retrofitting exercise was actually carried out here to make it sustainable. And also, this is actually a model project for GSA nationwide, both as a premier federal office space and as an energy efficient innovation project. Uh, well, on the design and innovation front, the vertical reeds support climbing vines and give occupants a connection to the nature. And uh, well, regional and uh, community design, the area surrounding EGWW is rich with transportation services that reduce uh, workers' need to drive. So they actually rely mostly on like a public transport. Land use and uh, site ecology, the building's west facing weeds uh, filter the sun's rays and host a variety of like a native deciduous vines. Bioclimatic design, as you can see here on this uh, section, uh, because of the importance daylighting plays in human health and comfort, the project optimized daylighting in the perimeter zone utilizing a task ambient approach to the lighting. Light and air, key to the building's energy efficient design was transforming the existing uninsulated facade to a high performance curtain wall uh, with elevation specific shading devices. Water cycle, 65% water savings has been achieved through a dual strategy of incorporating water conserving plumbing fixtures together with a rainwater collection system. Energy flows and energy future, site, uh, since its completed renovation, EGWW's energy consumption has been cut in half. Post-occupancy studies have allowed for fine-tuning of its systems and thus additional energy savings. Materials and construction. Over the course of a year, EGWW transformed from a precast concrete facade to a high-performance curtain wall. 
you can see in this picture how the transformation has took place. Long life lose fit. The primary design goal was to transform the existing building from an aging energy hog to one of the perimeter, uh, premier environmentally friendly buildings in the nation. So this is the how this project has actually uh, succeeded in its like uh, intent. Finally, we will see uh, one more example of a sustainable building uh, constructed in the recent times. This is Harvard Business School's Tata Hall Executive Education Center. Uh, on the Harvard Bay, Boston, Massachusetts. This is in United States of America and this was rated under the LEED New Construction Version 3 and it has received LEED Platinum Rating in the year 2014. So I would briefly uh, give you uh, information about this project where why is it called like a Tata Hall. Uh, this was actually uh, funded by the uh, Honorable Ratan Tata from India as a, like a philanthropic uh, work he has studied in his like a uh, like early days from this uh, Harvard Business School. So like this Tata Hall Executive Education Center serves as a model for a high performance building design on the Harvard Business School campus. The project's design is centered on creating a healthy and sustainable learning, you know, living and working environment that is focused on human comfort, energy and water conservation and environmental stewardship. The seven story 1,53,700 square foot multi-use building located to the west of the Charles River provides living and learning spaces for the HBS education, uh, executive education program. Tata, Tata Hall houses 22 living groups with 180 bedrooms and associated living group lounges, two 99-person case method classrooms, seminar spaces, project rooms, reception lounges and administrative offices. The project team applied an integrated approach to sustainable design which incorporated environmental strategies that influenced all aspects of the building's design. The site and landscape were designed to integrate strategies to reduce storm water runoff and create a comfortable outdoor environment. The building envelope was designed to meet a high performance target for occupant comfort while reducing total energy use of the building. The daylighting design creates well-lit workspaces for students, faculty and staff offering solar control. Uh, during critical periods of the day to reduce cooling loads and create a high quality visual environment. The high efficiency HVAC system provides comfort, high indoor air quality, you know, user control and energy conservation while the plumbing uh, design strategy conserves uh, portable water use. The project design achieved LEED Platinum certification. Some uh, major actually uh, project uh, metrics you see 48% water savings compared to an energy uh, policy act of 92, uh, 1992 baseline, 43% reduction in energy costs compared to the baseline standard, 5.2% uh, of energy use by cost is provided by an on-site renewable energy system photovoltaic uh, uh, solar cells, 92% of regularly occupied areas have access to views. 90% of individual spaces including bedrooms have individual lighting control. 90% of individual spaces including bedrooms have individual thermal comfort controls also. So you see some of the facts are given here on the left side. Uh, the location in Boston, you know, rating system was used like a lead new construction version 3. Re certification it has received platinum. Total points it has received 82 out of 110, 110. On the like uh, sections, uh, these are the actually sections in the, the like lead certification system. So on the sustainable sites, it has received 22 out of 26. Uh, water efficiency, 6 points out of 10. Energy and atmosphere, 28 out of 35. Materials and resources, 6 points out of 14. Indoor environmental quality, 11 out of 15. Innovation and design, 6 out of 6. Regional priority, 3 out of 4. So you can see like innovation and design, uh, it has received the uh, maximum actually uh, like a criteria points so which shows the kind of emphasis and attention given by the architects and the designer and the uh, the other stakeholders involved in this actually project so some of the actually pictures you can see from here like a, a how this building is utilizing these actually a glazed you know these uh, uh, surfaces to create a like a, a huge and wider spaces from a, even if while you are sitting inside you can have a look till like a far places maximizing even the like a daylight in, intake inside the uh, this is space you see like here the sunlight this shade is actually falling from this side so it is uh, entering till like a deeper inside this uh, uh, particular space reducing the actually need of like a electricity based uh, uh, luminaires
see the landscaping is also like designed in such a way that it feels like as if we are sitting uh, integrated with the outside and the, uh, the outer like a landscape of uh, this particular place on the energy efficiency and indoor uh, uh, environmental quality if you see like how they have actually worked to uh, actually for the like a fresh air change you know using actually in the uh, these methods in the like a summer condition and in the winter condition in the like a indoor environmental quality like high efficiency lighting with the appropriate light levels filtered outdoor air for ventilation occupancy sensors and control daylight access and views high performance double skin facade for the landscape and uh, site you can see in this uh, uh, like a diagram this uh, site plan over here this is the building you know and how they have actually integrated uh, with the neighboring actually with the building which are uh, existing from before over here and how they have uh, responded with the actually language of this curvaceousness uh, of the like a facade you know the neighboring buildings have actually this curvaceous actually front lines so the same language is adopted here in this building as well yeah plumbing systems and portable uh, water use uh, reduction so they have used uh, low flow pumping uh, plumbing fixtures you know water efficient appliances water efficient irrigation systems reduced hvac water uses this is the site and this is actually location of a harvard business school you can see from the aerial image okay in the layout in this uh, like a area you can see this is the location of this project okay and uh, how do you see these uh, building facades have these uh, uh, actually curvaceous uh, uh, front faces so the, the the building is actually following the same actually uh, visual language okay and that is why it has received the maximum uh, actually uh, values in like innovation and design this is the actually uh, uh, this uh, uh, report card of uh, this lead uh, certification okay with the points given to this building you can uh, see this uh, uh, slide in detail for your uh, deeper understanding like how these actually finer uh, criteria are evaluated you know and how much like a uh, uh, ratings are given in each of them okay, so this this actually building uh, gives one of the actually best examples like how a building can actually work for like a sustainable like goals how we can minimize the impact okay so we one actually the exa the, the reason for giving uh, you uh, these actually case examples from around the world from like a uh, different corners of india and the world is to uh, op to make you aware of the actually state of the art actually advancements happening in this uh, area you must actually learn from these projects you should actually apply these uh, strategies in your designs okay so with this we have come to the end of this lecture thank you everyone